Welcome to Grid Life Round 2 at Michigan's own Gingerman Raceway. After a soaking wet weekend at Mid-Ohio in April, Time Attack drivers here at Grid Life Midwest Festival will finally have a chance to show what they're made of in the dry. I'm Matt DeRoos. I'm Brad Yonkers. We're driving a 2002 BMW M3. Brad Yonkers, owner of the supercharged E46 M3, and Matt DeRoos, his close friend and co-driver, are favorites this season in the Street Mod class. Brad and I just decided to combine our forces and focus on his car this year. Mine's torn apart in the garage right now. For power, it's got an ESS tuning supercharger. Um, it's their second lowest horsepower kit. It makes 525 horsepower. It's got motion control, two-way adjustable coilovers, a good arrow wing, a homemade splitter, and a little bit of minor weight reduction around the safety equipment. For the most part, it's pretty simple, pretty stock. No. Um, no real build on the motor or anything like that. The big thing that's helpful is Matt and I have relatively similar driving styles, so we're not fighting each other's adjustments, you know? Like, I'll come in and be like, oh yeah, the car's really loose in the back, and, and then Matt will go drive it. He's like, yeah, it's really loose in the back, so we, we're in agreement on the changes to make. You know, our styles aren't so different. They were like, no, the car's great. No, the car sucks. No, the car, you know. We'll see how today plays out, see if anyone else gets quicker, and see if we can actually, like, make our car better. It's looking good so far. Hi, my name is Tony Fuentes. I'm driving the Solo Motorsports Motul Oil BMW 135i. Tony Fuentes, a professional hot shoe and the overall track mod victor last season. He's returned to the Midwest Festival with the Solo Motorsports BMW 1 Series. Uh, this weekend's just a big shakedown for the car. It's just a big test for us dialing in boost, suspension. I mean, the car is brand new from last year. This year we're running an Arsenal built N54. We went up a size to an EFR uh, 9174. Still stock trans, running a Clutchmaster twin disc, OS Gaiken diff, and the rest is pretty much stock. Have a new tire set up running a 355 rear tire and then a 295 front, which we feel the Kumo is the fastest tire available for our class, and that's what we'll run for the rest of the year. Uh, power levels right now, we have it turned down to wastegate, so it's only making maybe 480, 500 wheel. When it's turned up after we figure out a little bit of the teething issues, it'll make upwards of 800. High 800s, I would hope. As competitive as Tony is in the BMW, Track Mod will be stacked with fast cars and drivers this weekend. Representing Canada is front wheel drive competitor Chris Borsma. Uh, my name is Chris Borsma, and uh, I drive the K tuned uh, Honda Civic, and we're based out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, so, the car is uh, running in the Track Mod class. Uh, so, we have a built motor that we run. We run a Garrett turbo on it, a GTX 3076. Uh, we made a little bit more power this year than we have in years past. Uh, we run all the K2 suspension bits on it, so we got the K2 uh, coilovers on it, and all our suspension arms and spherical bearings, things like that. Roll cage, all the safety equipment, and uh, lots of aero on it that uh, the guys at Professional Awesome have helped us with, and uh, C3 Composites have done all the actual building and work on that. Uh, right now, I mean, we're looking at track mod overall, especially with the tow gate format uh, this weekend. So, you know, we got Tony Fuentes and the BMW uh, 135. Uh, and then there's a new car here that we've never seen before, uh, ZR1. Jeremy, uh, he, very fast, very fast. He got down in the 32s in the last session. So it's gonna be, uh, gonna be a difficult event for everybody, I think. There's lots of competition. My name is Jeremy Swenson. I'm running a 2011 Corvette ZR1 in the track mod class. It is basically completely not stock. Uh, pretty much everything has been changed. Basically, I built the motor myself. Transmission is RPM, level six transmission, and everything else has changed too. Viking double adjustable coilovers, they're one of my sponsors. We run Theralton ethanol in the car. Um, gives us as much horsepower as we can make. We can run all the timing and boost we want, and you don't have to worry about detonation or blowing up your motor. We're still not quite dialed in on the tune, uh, but we did make a little over 700 horsepower at the wheel, about 650 torque. So it's got plenty of power, and now it's a matter of getting the chassis around that and getting the driver to figure out what's going on too. Uh, yesterday I was able to set a track record, and then today again beat that as well. So I guess things are going pretty well. I'm not completely happy with the car, but uh, I guess you can't complain being in the lead. Between Tony, Chris, and Jeremy, track mod this weekend will be brutally competitive. Jeremy already has a class record under his belt for the weekend, as do Matt and Brad in Street Mod. 
But of course, it'll take more than class records to bring home the points in bracket battles. Uh, so in the toge battle, basically it's a lead follow type of uh, session. So lead car will go out and your job as the follow car is basically maintain that gap or, or close it up and stay on him. And then if you're in the lead, then your, your job is to run away from the guy behind you. You do one lap, then you do a cool down lap, you swap positions and do one more lap. And basically your two combined times, whoever has the quickest one will win. If you win the first lap, you've kind of got like a little bit, all right, I've got the, you know, yeah. I've kind of, I got to step up. And then if you lose the second one, it's like now all the pressure's on in that third lap. And it's, yep. I mean, it's a lot of pressure because you've already done two hot laps. You're hot, the car's hot. I think it'll be a lot more fun for spectators. Instead of 12 cars cruising around and you don't really know what's going on, to be able to see uh, basically a visual gap between the people either increasing or decreasing. I feel like it makes things more interesting. Time Attack's hard, a hard spectator sport to really kind of get excited about. The track battle's going to be awesome. You know, I really love doing wheel to wheel so a chase and lead follow type battle is going to be fun. People tend to go faster chasing somebody than they do on their own. I think that's what's exciting about brackets is that where we're sitting right now there's at least a second gap between us and second place. In time attack that's pretty comfortable but in the brackets that's not that comfortable. You have to be consistent every lap, you have to be fast every lap. That's what makes it really exciting for the brackets. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I, I think I think I think we got the time. I think we can probably get down into the low 30s. It's, the car will do it. Um, we just gotta. I gotta man up and uh, start going flat in a couple of areas where the arrow is gonna do its job and uh, pick up some time. If it's dry, I think I stand a chance to win. You know, being where I'm at, uh, I've learned to not be as cocky as maybe I once was. So uh, I'm not definitely not going to say I'm going to win this thing, but uh, I expect to do well. Overall weekend's going good so far. We have substantially less power we did last time we were here, and we're only a couple tenths off our time from prior year. So, unfortunately, Tony will never get a chance to compete in the brackets. During Friday's qualifying lapping, he's struck by sudden disaster. I mean, these things always tend to happen when you push a car to the limit. You know, obviously you're testing a car, you want to see how far you can push it and obviously learn new things and, you know, this one just went a little too far. As Friday and the final day of open lapping comes to a close, the brackets have been set. In Street Mod, Matt and Brad will take the top seed out of eight spots. Tomorrow morning, they'll face off against the bottom seed, Nikolai Deloff in another E46 M3. In Track Mod, the damage to Tony's car will force him to retire for the weekend. Gridlife newcomer Jeremy Swenson in his ZR1 will take the top seed, followed by Chris Borsma in his Honda Civic. Gridlife regular Michael Puglisi and his Evo 9 will round out the top three. It is cool to see that a front wheel drive car, a rear wheel drive car, and an all wheel drive car can be that close. And it just goes to show you that any car can really be fast, and that's what I really like about the track battle uh, format. As the sun sets and the grid life party starts to rumble, the bracket battle competitors prepare for their biggest challenge yet. Street Mod competitors prepare to hit the track for their first battles of the weekend. Matt DeRuz decides to send Brad out for the first heat. Get ready for the bracket battle, round one. Uh, it's still raining. Brad's in the car. We switched on to our rain tires, the Continentals. First round should be okay. Just letting Brad get some rain rain time in the car and uh, we'll see what happens. A little nervous. I mean, nervous, always anxious butterflies before this. We swapped on the rain tires. Uh, he's, Nikolai doesn't have rain tires, so I think that'll be a little bit of an advantage for us. Um, you know, we, we kind of get the advantage going into this round as the first seed we get to go against someone, you know, a little bit slower pace. So hopefully, you know, hopefully this first round will go well. The competition, Nikolai Deloff, who occupies the eighth and final seed, aims to give Matt and Brad a run for their money. Uh, we're about to get into the first um, bracket battle for Street Modified. I somehow squeezed into last spot, so I get to battle the fastest car in the class. I'm gonna go out there and have fun and see if I can give him a hard time. Their car's faster and I'm a little underprepared, but like I said, just out here to have fun and see what I can do. See if I can put down a good time and don't crash. <laughs> 
As Street Class wraps up its initial battles, Brad and Nikolai line up to go out. If Brad can create a gap on his lead lap and close the gap as he follows, he'll take the win. Brad leads on the first lap. The track is still relatively damp, and with wet tires in the car, Brad has the advantage. Pressure is on Brad, who will follow Nikolai. If he doesn't close the gap here, Nikolai will win the battle, relegating Brad and Matt to a bottom spot for the weekend. Brad knows what he has to do. delivers, managing to close the gap between him and Nikolai. With one apiece, Matt and Brad will come in and stage up for their final one more time face off. We had our first tie of the bracket battle matchup, so we're getting ready to send them back out for a winner take all. How are you feeling? Uh, nervous. <laughs> had to do a little coaching. I don't think he realized he could uh, break as deep as he could, so I just told him he needs to break deeper and I think he'll have it. Brad and Nikolai take off for the final round. Once again, Nikolai is following. He knows how to apply the pressure, as we've already seen. But Brad won't let him sneak up so easily. As the pair fly around Gingerman, Brad begins to extend his lead. The gap is widening. But as the two approach Gingerman's tight final turn 11, the same corner that took out Tony Fuentes just yesterday, Brad makes a critical error. I think I kind of had him right till the final straightaway and then hit a big puddle and kind of lost the time I had. The standing water on track throws Brad off his line, stealing away valuable time. In the moments it takes him to resettle the car, Nikolai has begun to close the gap. Brad hammers the throttle on the front straight as Nikolai dances around the puddle. They fly across the finish line and... Um, we made the call at the last minute, have me drive, um, win as a team, lose as a team kind of thing, and I didn't drive very well. <laughs> so we got knocked out in the first round of brackets. Um, Nikolai, you know, he drove awesome and, and beat me two out of three times. So that's, you know, that's bracket battles. Every lap counts. You know, we were saying that before the event too. Every, every lap counts, every mistake you make could be the, potentially the difference between winning or losing the round, and there, I just made too many mistakes this time. But that was a fun battle The ruthless bracket battle format has claimed its first street mod victim, and has given Nikolai, who started in the bottom seed, a huge upset. But the competition today is just beginning. As the remaining drivers in Street Mod show down with their first round matchups, Track Mod competitor Chris Borsma readies for battle. I feel terrible. I have not done a lot of rain driving, I'm not going to lie. We've taken a bunch of power out of the car. Our buddy actually lent us some RE71s to, uh, to race on because we were on the Viper tires and those don't work in the rain. So we're going to go out, feel it out, be safe and uh, just smile. It's a, it's a fun event, so that, that's really all you can do at this point. Uh, we're going up against this uh, S14 behind us, actually, with all the arrow on it, and uh, Mike Lee is uh, the competitor's name, so I think it should be a pretty good battle for our first round. Chris, though inexperienced in wet conditions, was faster than Mike in qualifying. With any luck, consistency will keep him in the lead. The uh, track dried up quite a bit more than we were expecting it to. Uh, we went out on our uh, RE71 kind of rain tires uh, just to be safe. Uh, and the first uh, lap I was on the lead uh, and we opened up quite a considerable uh, gap from the uh, follow car. Had a little bit of a dicey moment coming in through four into five there where the pavement changes from old to new. 
went from tons of grip to absolutely no grip and washed completely out off the track. But managed to keep it two wheels on the track, just ran really wide out onto the curbing, and then a little dicey through seven and eight and nine complex. So uh, we kept it safe on the second uh, follow lap through those areas, uh, and then could put the hammer down up the back straight and uh, close the gap up under braking. You know, we he we kind of given him ten cars to start, and uh, I think under braking we closed it right up. I was right onto his bumpers. Always a class act, Chris lets Mike know it was a good race. But calm as he may seem, even an easy win like Chris's could have quickly turned to disaster. His two wheels off on the lead lap could have cost him the race if he'd slid any further off track. The normally chill nature of time attack is nowhere to be found here. With bracket battles, every lap counts. What's going on? Uh, we're waiting to see if it's going to be wet or dry. To me, it's, I'm hoping it's dry. I don't have ABS or traction control. Uh, and I'm going against a four-wheel drive Lamborghini that's got everything, so uh, it'll be fun to see. Uh, if it dries out, my goal is to win. If it stays wet, I don't know if I'll push the car hard enough. I guess we'll just play it as it goes. It's a high-dollar battle between two Jeremys, Swenson in his ZR1 and Boyson in his Lamborghini Huracan Performante. Out of the box, the Lambo may have had a performance edge, but as a track mod car, the ZR1 is anything but stock. Jeremy will flex his Corvette's 700 wheel horsepower every chance he gets, stretching his lead to take the first round. Jeremy's rear wheel drive ZR1 has the traction it needs to put down the power. On his follow lap, Jeremy gives himself a wide berth and takes the win, time attack style. Of the drivers we started out following this weekend, Tony, Matt and Brad, Chris and Jeremy, only two remain in contention. In Street Mod, Nikolai Deloff continues his Cinderella story, unseating Dan Lewis in his S2000 and advancing to the finals. In Track Mod, with Tony out of the picture, Jeremy gets a buy run into the finals. Chris will have to gear up to face off with Michael Puglisi and his Evo. Yeah, we're, uh, we're up against Mike. He went fastest overall in that last session in the, the track battle. He did a 136. Uh, so the track was definitely drier when he ran, but that car is fast. He's an amazing driver, so we got our work cut out for us for sure. On their first lap out, Michael will adopt a very aggressive tactic, following Chris super close into the first corner. This will put maximum pressure on Chris, but may also make it a bit harder for Michael to close the gap. That proves to be the case, as Chris manages to widen the gap, taking the win for the first round. Though he was able to pull out a first round win as he assumes the follow position, Chris begins to wish he'd switched out for sticky tires between sessions. Uh, we made the switch in the morning to the RE71s, thinking it was going to be a very rainy day and it, it dried up quite a bit and uh, unfortunately that really impacted our ability to kind of maintain the same pace that we had yesterday. As the hot lap begins, the pair look well matched, but Mike's stickier Yokohamas and all-wheel drive will give him a vital advantage. Chris is pushing as hard as his car will let him, but he struggles to close the gap. As they come back into the pits, they get the word. Mike took the second round. They'll be going out one more time. Honda leads Mitsubishi back onto the track once again, and the hot lap begins. Mike will give Chris a more generous following distance this time. As sticky as his tires are, though, the heat of consecutive hot lapping is beginning to have an effect. Their grip was just falling off fast on the tires, and I, I just I gave it my everything. I, I, I tried to brake as late as I could, turn in um, to get the car set up and exit as best as I could. With as little grip as Mike has, unfortunately, Chris has even less. As the pair around the final corner, it's evident what the result is. Mike has closed the gap on Chris. The Evo will take the win. We got knocked out in the uh, quarterfinals. Uh, it was hard, but we did uh, 
We did it one more time. It was a very, very close battle with Mike uh, in the Evo there. And it was a lot of fun, but uh, unfortunately he got the best of us in the uh, one more time and he wound up moving forward. So we got knocked out. I think we finished third, I think. Racket battles have seen their second upset as Michael Puglisi moves on to face Jeremy Swenson in the finals. Are you worried? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely worried. I haven't been out on a, a clean track yet today. It's been raining, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it looks like it's come around. Times are dropping. And I just had a buy, so I haven't been out recently. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be a tough competition. I mean, he's fast. Um, and the ground keeps changing, so anything's possible at this point. Michael and his Evo are at a distinct power disadvantage. And with the track that dries it's been all day, Jeremy and the ZR1 will have every opportunity to put the power to the pavement. The two take off, Jeremy the top seed leading the way. On the warm-up lap, Michael sizes up an opponent he's never run with before. Jeremy's first ever grid life event has put him at the top of the highly competitive track mod bracket. Victory is within grasp. Michael turns on the juice as they round the final corner to begin the hot lap, but nothing could prepare him for the raw power of the Corvette. Well, I just watched him pull away from me. There was so much horsepower in that car. He's a phenomenal driver. He was, he was hauling. Try as he might to stay with Jeremy, Swenson and the Corvette are just too fast. But as they near the finish of the first hot lap, Turn 11 has one more surprise in store for this weekend. The lap was fast. It was going to be, I think, a 31, maybe a 30. It was. I was. I felt like I was flying. I don't want to guarantee anything, but uh, last corner, uh, I break where I always break, and apparently it wasn't enough this time. Uh, just a little too deep, I guess, and went off track and mowed the lawn. According to the rules, any four wheels off incident equal a disqualification. Towards the end, I'm just trying to chase him down um, after 10, and I just watched him go off, and I didn't know what to expect. I, I thought, I'm like, okay, so uh, we're going again, and then everyone's cheering and clapping, and I was just like, wait, I won? Like, this is not possible, how did I win? With Jeremy going four wheels off, Michael Puglisi takes the overall win for track mod. Yet again, another upset from the Evo. as the bracket victors take to the track for their victory lap. None of the drivers we set out to follow are among them. And as amazing as Michael's track mod upset was, the most shocking victory will have to go to Nikolai Deloff, who managed to come up from an eighth place seat to claim the street mod win. I mean, when you talk about rain driving, Matt and Brad are the first people who come up when you're talking about grid life and rain driving. They're who everybody goes to talk to about, hey, I'm screwing up in the rain, can you help me? And Nikolai beating them is, that's, that's like Muhammad Ali getting knocked out by, I don't know, some 90 pound Asian kid. Jackie Dang. <laughs> It wasn't going to be a close one. Lap, there was seconds in lap time, but because of the condition and the way they were, the track was really treacherous, really slippery, and for an eighth seed to take out the number one seed, that was incredible. Brad and I got knocked out right away, but we were there the whole rest of the time, watching, cheering, you know, pu pulling for certain drivers. You know, we weren't the only upset, and it, it was exciting the whole way. I think it's super exciting. I'm still in favor of it. Uh, less in favor of it right at this moment, but I think I think it's super cool, you know? I really enjoy it. I think it's a new take on Time Attack. So really, I mean, it gives an opportunity for the fans to see the cars actually battling one another, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. I've never done this style before, and I think it's catching on, and I think it'll continue uh, a lot more of the Time Attack things. I think will turn to a bracket style like this, and it is a lot of fun, more high stakes. Nerves are higher, adrenaline is higher, and uh, definitely more exciting for the fans. We've got fans watching, we've got people cheering. This is incredible. I really think it's the future of Time Attack. The bracket battles have provided some of the most hard-fought competition to grace this series and have shaken up the season standings considerably. We had a good weekend. We set the track mod front-wheel drive record. You know what, even though we got knocked out in the track battle, I have a big smile on my face. We're driving the car back on the trailer, so another amazing event by the guys of Grid Life. Upside, we set a track mod record and we were pretty fast. 
Good life's been great. Great people, uh, great facility. The track's a lot of fun. It's well run and organized. I'm really pleased. I'll definitely be back for more Grid Life. We'll just have to wait till Grid Life Audubon to see if Michael Puglisi can make good on his lead and if Brad Matt can find redemption. The battle's going to be much closer, you know. It's, it's going to be a fight to the end now. You know, we're going to have to work for it, not take any other events for granted. You know, people always kind of give us crap because we usually go fast right away, right out of the gate. And uh, we're going to go really fast right out of the gate every time for the rest of the season. <laughs>